has come up to the great white north and put a whooping on the Toronto Raptors. Damn, that stung. This man just said the 76ers put a whooping on the Raptors at home. With that being said, it was a great season for Toronto. But one thing is clear, this team needs to upgrade its talent. And Donovan Mitchell is exactly what they need. With the salary cap rising, a good, hard-working player like Fred Van Vliet can opt out of his contract during the 2023-24 season and would be eligible to sign a four-year close to $115 million extension with Toronto. And we all know that would be a huge mistake, which is why they need to trade him this summer to get the best value they can before it gets worse. There is a lot of pressure on Danny Ainge to make moves this summer. We all know he's not keeping Rudy Gobert together with Donovan Mitchell, so one needs to go. As a matter of fact, Rudy confirmed it today. He said it's him or me, according to these tweets. He will demand that one of them be traded in the next few days. He doesn't feel like they will win a championship together. Wow, 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 Rudy Gobert, really? Mitchell will bring you more value, especially to a Raptor squad who has the right players to flip and make a really good offer that Danny may not be able to refuse. This would certainly be more of a retooling rather than a rebuild. I don't believe the Jazz hired Danny to begin a rebuild. So trading Mitchell and Clarkson for Fred, Gary, and Birch, along with two future unprotected picks, seems like a good haul that gives them a new look where they will still be competitive but have assets in the future and we all know Danny loves those. Just ask the Celtics. With that said, let's bring in Robert Pensari from Pensari Basketball to give us his thoughts on the potential fit with Donovan Mitchell in a Raptors uniform. I think he fits extremely well. Um, the first thing that jumps out at me is on-ball creation, right? I think about the fit next to Scotty Barnes and Pascal Siakam. I think the three of these players together, you would be getting a player who's 28, 25, and effectively next year, 21. You get a young core, a big three, if you will. Three guys that you and I would probably project in the near term being top 25, top 30 type players. I think in Mitchell, you get the best player in the deal, which is generally a good philosophy to go with. And you get Jordan Clarkson to bolster your bench scoring, which is really sorely needed. I think the one thing that jumps out at me and to any Raptor fans out there who are saying, hey, we're moving the youngest player in this trade and Gary Trent Jr. and we're moving an all-star, we're adding picks. How is Donovan Mitchell worth it? Because, again, Fred Van Vliet has been a positive defender. Donovan Mitchell has struggled defensively. Uh, he definitely struggled defensively in the playoffs against the, um, against the Mavericks. I think the way you sell this is three-level scorers who average 28 points per game in the playoffs. Um, who can break zones, who can create for others. I think he's a pretty underrated passer. Extremely. I think the, off <laughs> I think the offensive upside here is enormous. Um, to the defensive worries, because obviously Nick Nurse is a very defensively oriented coach, um, I think that Donovan Mitchell has to do a lot less for the Raptors offense than he does for the Jazz offense, where he's literally option one, two, and three for their offense mm -hmm. right now. And he's... Um, I think that with Siakam, with Barnes doing a lot of the on-ball creation for him, he'll have a little bit more energy on defense. And at that point, you really do go back to his rookie season and you go back to his college career and you say, is this the type of player who can probably check your second or third option on the perimeter? I'm not saying that he's going to be better than Scotty or OG defensively, but he can be a capable defender for sure. He has a pretty lengthy That's what span. he was. I mean, that's Absolutely. what he was coming into the draft. Absolutely. A lot of people saw him as a D Wade type. So even if, if he's a little bit undersized as a guard, I mean, Raptor fans out there saying six, eight wingspan, man, wingspan, six, 10, six, wingspan. 11 wingspan. Yeah. Six, 10, six, 11, depending on who you ask. Um, the other part of this that I think is uh, deeply underrated is the fact that he's a three level scorer, something you don't have with Fred and Gary. Neither one of those players can finish inside the paint. And if you think that that's a skill that you can just pick up, it's not. It's not a skill that pretty much anyone has ever picked up. Uh, you can get slightly better at it, 
But given where they're starting, this is not something that I think that you would ever be able to expect that they can consistently get past their man. They're both tough shot takers. They're both guys who consistently take bad shots on low efficiency. Donovan Mitchell, as a first option in Utah, is an extremely efficient player, including against playoff defenses. The final thing that I will say to this is at 25 years old, don't expect, don't be surprised if Donovan Mitchell can actually take it up a level offensively. Given his skill set as a shooter, as a scorer, as a, his, his handle is just absolutely incredible. Um, he puts pressure on the rim in a way that very few guards do. Think John Morant, what you're watching right now. Um, having a player like Rudy Gobert is a great hindrance to someone like Donovan Mitchell in the paint. His ability to finish in the paint is always going to be made difficult by having that guy always there in the dunker spot. So with the Toronto Raptors, you imagine how he might fit in. The angles, the the space that becomes available, especially if you can bring in a guy like Clarkson in this deal as well, OG Ananobi, if Scotty Barnes can improve as a shooter with Pascal Siakam, this is the type of lineup that offers him the type of space to go out and maybe become like a 30 point per game scorer for you. Absolutely. So I know that you have, you know, Donovan and, and Kawhi on this on the screen. And I don't want to say that he's Kawhi, mm -hmm. but offensively, he can bring you a very similar star type quality. And I think that the Raptors are really in a position right now where they just have a ton of guys who should be like the fourth option on a team, right? Whether it's mm -hmm. Scotty right now, fourth, third, Pascal Siakam, third, second, Fred Van Vliet, third, fourth, Gary Trent, Uchi Ananobi, Precious Achua, potentially if he develops. None of these guys, apart from Scotty Barnes, project as the first player offensively for a championship lineup. I think based on skill set and based on a pretty sizable sample that donovan mitchell can be the first option on a championship team if you enjoyed this video please like share and subscribe for the latest on the toronto raptors i'll see you on the next one